What have I got to moan about? <laughs> Welcome back to Panda Pen Club, a public service announcement. You might find this hard to believe, but I have in my time made mistakes. I'd like to share the five worst mistakes I have ever made in the field of fountain pens, the most regrettable pens of my life. So you can avoid making the same mistakes that I made. Take from it what you can. Okay, let's get right into it. Number five in our rundown, the Noodler's Ahab. I've had this pen long enough for the aberrant odor of its vegetal resin body to have dissipated somewhat. It's still present if I unscrew the shaft and have a good old honk inside. However, that is not the reason I dislike this pen. I can put up with malodorous pens if they write superbly, if they fulfill my perhaps giddy and over-the-top expectations. Many people view the Noodler's Ahab as the epitome of the hobbyist's fountain pen. It's a fountain pen for people who like to roll up their sleeves and get stuck into the minutiae of adjusting a pen, the granular business of making a pen work. Although some people do have these work out the box, it's far from a certainty that your Noodler's Ahab will work out the box. Perhaps it's not made for cack-handed little weirdos like me, but I have dutifully gone through quite a lot of the excellent posts on Fountain Pen Network regarding how to tenderly nurture your Noodler's Ahab into springy, flexy perfection. I've, I've dismantled it. I've gone through umpteen stages of washing with soapy water, endless little adjustments of the feed, and I get the same result, which is eventually it's collapses back into its original state, which is to work for a little while. This is a flex nib pen, and that's how it's sold. However, if you're not willing to make the adjustments and you don't get one that works out the box, and if my experience is anything to go by, then it'll write for a little while after it's just been freshly inked, and you'll get some lovely flexing, and then it'll start to conk out and you'll need to flick or re-ink or, or do something that, something messy to get the pen working again. And this usually happens when you try and flex the nib. Since most people are gonna be buying this to try out flex nibs, and it's not clearly stated on the packaging that this is a pen that can be an excellent flex writer if you're willing to tinker with it ad nauseum, then that, that's problematic to me. I'd get it, it would be fine if there was, a, it was some sort of a warning. An interesting experiment, but ultimately a source of frustration and a bit of a time sink. I'm all for DIY, I really am, but I feel like a job should be finishable. It should be, you should be able to put your considered effort in to a project and then see the fruits of your labors in a, fair, a fairly reasonable length of time thereafter. Whereas this, I didn't experience that. I have put the effort in. It hasn't yielded satisfactory results for me. So that's why the Noodler's Ahab is number five on this list. 28 pounds on the ledger of regret. Number four, the Moonman T2. My butchered, repaired Frankenstein Moonman T2, which I reviewed just recently. This is a copy of another fountain pen, and it does not make improvements on that design. There are many Moonman pens out there that I like very much, that I'm willing to defend to a certain extent. Went too far for me, and check out the review if you want the full story on that. Better off as a paperweight, or a missile. £16.54 on the disaster account. Number three, the Lamy Aeon. This is a funny one to me. A comparison to two other Lamy pens that prompted me to buy this one because I liked them so much. The Lamy 2000 and the Lamy Safari. Look at the fabulous design of these iconic 
pens. Now look at this. Not only was their design fantastic, but they write beautifully, which was why I was willing to look past the rather lead pipish appearance of the Lamy Aeon. Another curious thing about this pen is the texture. I almost, I, I, I'm pretty sure I can file my nails with the granulated metal of the shaft, but I bought it. So I can obviously tolerate the appearance. And in some ways I like a substantial hefty pen in my hand. The problems for me begin when you take the cap off and they begin almost immediately. The cap fits in a very curious way. You have a strange pop. The cap then goes round and round without encumbrance. There is not a very good fit. It just sits like this. It spins around like a top. Despite the appearance of looseness, there's a suction to it. So when you pull this off, you're sucking ink out of the nib, which is enormously frustrating, enormously messy, and it's particularly irritating with the material of this pet because the ink gets ingrained and smeared. It's not very easy to clean off. So you're constantly shading your fingertips into a sort of, well, a lighter hue of whatever ink you're trying to lay down on the page. It writes perfectly well, but it makes a big old mess. This is the bloated, sickly cousin to the Lamy 2000. This is the, the leering uncle to the Lamy Safari. That's another 49 pounds onto the Panda Pan Club ledger of unfortunate decisions. A controversial one, perhaps, or perhaps not. Number two, the Platinum, 3776 Century, which I have in this gorgeous blue demonstrator version with gold furniture. It's a marvellous looking pen. It comes with the fabled ink preserving cap that allows you to leave this lying in a drawer for two years and have it right, right away. Well, it's perhaps a necessity in my case because it certainly does get left lying around for long periods of time because I don't like using it. I bought this in a fit of enthusiasm after a long love affair with a number of sailors. I was expecting more from a fellow high-end Japanese manufacturer. The Platinum isn't quite what I'm after. It's like writing with a little needle point. Their nibs skew narrower than you would think. This is a fine, it writes like a bloody razor blade as far as I can tell. I've made holes in paper with this pen and that's not from the saturation of ink on the paper because it's a little on the dry side as well. Those are my two problems with this pen. At the price I expect to love it. At the price, perhaps I should do my research. There's nothing vastly wrong with it, but I vastly prefer writing with almost every other pen I own. That's another 135 pounds in the negative column on our spreadsheet of imminent eviction. Number one, the Conklin Duraflex 120th anniversary special edition. Yeah, no, I don't take responsibility at all. It's a great looking pen, isn't it? Looks lovely, wonderful color, rose gold furniture. The design recalls the Parker Dewar fold with the lovely flat tops. It's gorgeous. It's a really lovely, lovely pen to look at. Maybe a little over-designed. You've got Conklin written there, Conklin written there. And you also have the engraving on the shaft. This is number 1148 of 1898. 1898 being the year, the year this pen is commemorating. What's the problem? What have I got to moan about here? Well, take the cap off once again. This is another flex. I've got two flex pens on my list, two modern flex pens, I should add. All the problems of this pen are rooted in the nib and the feed. It's a frustrating writing experience. It's a terrible nib. It doesn't flex very easily and runs out of ink when you do flex it. Another writing sample. It starts well and it peters out. You can write in a perfectly pleasant way without flexing and that'll go on a bit longer, but it really is a pain. It's the expectation that this nib will flex is built in to the deal. So it scores far, far worse for me than the Noodler's Ahab the other flex pen on my list. If you're looking to try flex pens, I recommend getting on eBay or getting to your local secondhand dealer. And I'll put a recommendation for a particularly good flex pen retailer in the description of this video and get yourself a vintage flex. 90 pounds into the coffers of Conklin. What's your experience?
Are you a, an adamant lover of the Conklin Duraflex? Do you loathe everything I've said today? Let us know in the comments. Oh, 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 oh,